to this story. The man dubbed the Station Strangler, Norman Afsal Simons, was paroled last week after 28 years behind bars. He was convicted and sentenced for the kidnapping and murder of a 10-year-old boy, Elroy van Ruen. That happened in 1995. But there are many questions about the bodies of more boys that were found in shallow graves around Cape Town. Simons was a student teacher at the time of these murders, um, seemingly liked by those he taught. Um, and the jury's out, really, on whether um, he is linked at all to any of the other killings. Teacher Yumna Isaacs Ali worked alongside him. She recalls how the news of Simons' imminent arrest came to light. When I became aware that he was a suspect in this, as a station strangler, was days before his arrest, a day or so, not even that long. I remember it was a weekend, and when Norman was identified as a suspect, um, it was about to be announced in the newspaper, and I can't remember, but somebody contacted the principal of our school at the time and informed him that um, this was going to be announced in the newspaper that Sunday morning. And then we were called together. I was part of the senior management team at the time. And we were asked to meet on that Sunday morning. And then the facts said, kind of, or at least the facts around his being a suspect was then made known to us that morning in a, in a meeting. But prior to that, Norman was just a staff member, participated in all the safety precautions that we were taking to keep the children safe. And until that day, which was like a day before he was arrested, we knew nothing. All I recall when Norman was linked to the murders of those children, that there was pandemonium at the school, with parents coming to the school. Many parents assumed that we knew, which was not true. Parents accused us of covering for him and um, harboring a criminal, which was also not true. We were in shock. Um, many staff members um, had to be treated for trauma and shock because they were very close to him. Norman had crept into many people's hearts and nobody could um, assimilate those crimes with the person that we came to know. So it was a tumultuous time at our school, at Alpine Primary at the time. And to say that we were a dysfunctional school for many months after that as a result of that arrest um, was obviously uh, understandable under the conditions. We were dealing with trauma. The children were, were dealing with the trauma. The parents were dealing with it. And there was no support that came from authorities, you know, to, to our school. And so we had to find ways on, in a personal capacity to deal with whatever emotions we were feeling. Emotions around confusion, um, disbelief, uh, disappointment, shock, anger you know, for various reasons. And obviously people had their personal opinions about the matter, but we could not align the crimes to the person that we had come to know. Our school received an invitation to visit Norman while he was in prison, at least when he was just arrested. There was no conviction yet. Um, because I was fraught with a lot of um, questions and guilt that perhaps, you know, I had something to do with... Uh, his anger or whatever the case is. Uh, it was obviously just something I needed to settle with myself. I wasn't convinced that, that Norman was capable of such heinous crimes and I wanted to perhaps have closure. And so I volunteered as one of the staff members, you know, to go and visit him. Um, a colleague of mine um, accompanied me. The, the invitation was extended to the whole staff. Um, nobody wanted to take the opportunity and I thought that I would um, when I got there, obviously it was my first time ever being in a prison, I was a little apprehensive, but um, I was seeking closure. And so when I, sp I didn't get a long opportunity to speak to him, obviously we just asked him how he was. He seemed calm, and um, I, I, I wanted to know, you know, like, could you, would you be capable of something like this? You know, are you capable of doing something like this? Because that's not how I see you. And of course, he wasn't commit, going to commit himself to any answer. He just said to me, let the law take its course, something along those lines, and that um, we must all just pray for him.